Hi there, today we're going for a walk through Burning Woods, which is outside East Linton, which is in East Lothian. And they call it Burning Memorial Wood because they have an unusual thing here, which is a graveyard in the middle of the woods. So we'll show you that later. There's Winston, he can't wait to get on his walk, so let's go. Hello, say hello Winston. Winston, see? 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 You go say hello? Hey? Hey? Ah, he's too busy having a sniff. So these are nice woods. I've been here, I only recently found these woods because I've lived in East Lothian all my life and it's only last year I think was the first time that I ever came to these woods. And funnily enough it was a guy from Edinburgh that told me about them and I never knew they existed and they're a great place to go for a walk with the dog because they're peaceful um, I wouldn't be here if it starts getting dark because a few months ago we came here it started to get dark about 4 o'clock and we just completely got lost it was just pure luck that we managed to find our way out of the woods or we would have been in them all night and stupidly enough I left my mobile phone at home so I couldn't have got in contact with anybody here we go, he must have seen something. Come on, let's go, never mind that just now. We'll go for walkies first. Yeah, so all the, the ground looks the same when it gets dark and you do it, the paths just disappear and it's very, very tricky, even though you have a rough idea, you think you know the way you're going or the way to get back, you find out that it's not that easy because it all looks the same. He just saw a pheasant there and he had a wee go at it, but pheasant is faster than him. Um, the thing I've noticed about these woods is they're not well managed. There's a lot of rhododendron bushes sprouting up. It's not too bad in this bit, but you can see them here and back there through there, through there, and what happens is the rhododendrons, they strangle the, the ground so nothing can grow and they just completely take over and bit by bit all the trees will fall down and just disappear. That's why when you look at the trees around the rhododendrons they're really thin because they're not getting a lot of moisture and they will just fall down. It's a bit muddy here today. Luckily I've got my sort of half welly, half boots on. Are you come in? Winston, come on, good boy. I've got a fascination about woods now. It only really started about two years ago. I started to pay attention to the planet around about me, my environment, start to learn a little bit. I've lived in the country all my life, well, country towns all my life, and the countryside's always been round about us, it's always been available to me, and yet I've known so very little about it. I've just took it all for granted pretty much most of my life. There's a little bit of damage in here after Storm Arwen, but not as much in other places. You know, there's a tree down there, and there's one down over here, but They've got off with it relatively free. You really need somebody to come into these woods and rip out all the rhododendron plants because nobody seems to be bothering anymore about woods and things. It's a shame. It's a wee bit cold today and all my feet feel cold. The ground's really muddy. The dog's smart, he doesn't walk in the mud. Not like me, aren't you? You're a smart boy, aren't you? Eh? Where's the stick? Get the stick.
It's a shame that the landowners don't maintain the land anymore. My father was a forester and he spent all his time in the woods cutting down trees and pruning and you know every day of his working life he worked in the woods. You know they would have got rid of all these rhododendrons and made a big pile and burnt it and you know and now these landowners they don't look after the land anymore they're just they have all these things like mountain bike paths and you know graveyards in the woods and all these different things but so they're making money but they just don't put it back in to their surroundings and and it's a wee bit like if you keep taking money out of the bank and you don't put any back in then sooner or later there's going to be no money and sooner or later there won't be any woods because they'll be all overtaken by this stuff you know, which when it flowers it looks beautiful but it's literally, you know, a weed that spawns and it just kills everything you plant that one little weed in your garden and then within two years it'll be all over your garden and people think it's like a flower or a part of the woods but it's not and sooner or later there isn't going to be woods here I don't know what's going to happen in the future for future generations because we don't seem to care about them anymore you know I don't think any past generation ever cared about a future generation you know I think we were just lucky in the sort of from the 50s up to the 2000s that nothing really went wrong in the world to affect us too seriously but I think future generations are they're really just going to have nothing we're going to make sure of it, you know, that they'll have nothing. Um, and that's such a shame. I don't think it'll happen straight away, you know, but I think there will be in the next 50 years big changes in the world. Changes in our freedoms, changes in how the planet looks. Um, I don't think people care. They haven't woken up to the fact yet that, you know, it's all in our hands. This landowner that owns all this land, he should be paying people out of his riches to sort these woods out. You know, or even trying to organise volunteers, because there's volunteers that would come in these woods and cut all this down. You know, they're doing it in Gifford. I actually helped do it a few weeks back ago. And we burnt all the... We chopped it up and we burnt the um, rhododendron plants. Or the rhododendron bushes, I should say. Well, anyway, I was watching that news today, and or the news today, and all this stuff about the Conservative Party. Did they have a Christmas party last year? And you know, well, nobody else did. You know, it's so annoying that people even would suspect that politicians would tell the truth. I mean, all my life, and I'm 57, I've been brought up to believe that politicians just lie all the time and evade, their job is to evade questions, evade the truth and blame each other for everything. And I don't think it matters these days what party, whether it's the Tory party, whether it's the Labour party, the SNP party, I don't think it matters. I think they're all just liars and devious and they were all telling us to stay in and they were going out and enjoying themselves right at the start of the pandemic you know and a lot of them got caught but a lot of them didn't get caught even these medical chief medical people were doing the same thing the one in Scotland that you know she was telling everybody on TV to stay indoors and not to go out unless it's necessary you know, even to do shopping. And she's away partying and visiting her mother and, you know, all these things. Telling everybody else not to do it. So, for me, personally, I don't think 
politicians will ever be honest. And it's just a case of voting in the best of a bad bunch, really, when you go to the polls. Because it's certainly, you know, certainly um, I've came to the crossroads. Which way do I go? I think I'll go straight on, although there's another big tree down here. They're certainly just uh, taking all the people in the country as fools, you know. All this Brexit stuff they talked about, it's just total nonsense. We're in, we've had Brexit and we're not any better off. You know, they told us that everything was going to be better and everything's turned out to be worse. You know, I know in Scotland we didn't vote for it because Scottish people are a wee bit more sensible and they could see that they were being spoon-fed a lot of lies by people like Farage and Johnson and, you know, these extremists, Rhys Mogg, um, what was the wee guy that used to be always, I can't remember his name, he was always shouting about foreigners coming into the country, they kept putting him in prison, Tommy Johnson, was it? Tommy Johnson? Tommy Robinson, that's who it was. You know, all these people telling us how great the country would be, how we would have these big American deals and we didn't need Europe and everything would be cheaper. And what's happened? Everything's more expensive. We don't have any American deals because Biden got into power and Biden's for Europe. He's not a Europe sceptic. He comes from Ireland and he's for Europe and he's for Ireland in particular. So there's no big trade deals. We've just been, again, we've just been conned by these liars and, you know, that keep telling us all these things. And it's not nice. This right-wing extremism that goes on now, it's everywhere. You know, it all started with Trump. You know, let's not believe what anybody says. Everything's a lie apart from what I say. You know, there's no COVID. You know, there's no... Um, there's nothing bad's happening to the planet. Um, just believe what I tell you. Let's just make money. You know, and forget about future generations. Forget about everything. You know, and people... You know... They, they, they bought all those lies. And now we're worse off. In every department, everything in this country has been worse off. The food's expensive. The fuel's more expensive. Houses prices have gone up. Everything. And I know that these liars that are in government will blame COVID-19 for everything. Because that's easy for them. That's been like the biggest gift horse they've been handed. And never look a gift horse in the mouth. That's what Boris Johnson will be saying. So let's blame the demise of the NHS. Let's blame the price rises. Let's blame everything on COVID. Planting was completed in 1960 and I think that's the last time any kind of maintenance has took part or taken place in these woods. Um, certainly looks that way. Uh, so that would be oh, 61 years ago um, and I think they've just been left to their own devices since then I could be wrong but it just certainly doesn't look like anybody's um, done anything although there does seem to be a big clearing here for some reason and it looks like somebody has been camping here at some point because there's the, where the fire is and he wants his stick again I need to throw my stick. Good boy. A few weeks ago when I came in here, it started to get dark and I got lost. And this is the path that I was looking for. And I couldn't find it because when it was dark, it all looks exactly the same. All you see is leaves and trees. And I took a path over there that took me further into the centre of the woods. Instead of taking this path, that would take me down towards the road. So, I need to remember that for the future. 
because it gets dark quite early right now because he wants to throw his stick again. He's got lots of energy this dog. Most energetic dog I've ever met in my life. He just energy is just unbelievable. He never stops. He's always whinging or he's, ever since he could first make a sound he started whinging or barking and he's never stopped. He can't get a lie in, he's waking you up five, six o'clock in the morning, ready to go again. And it's every day. And if you don't get up he'll just whinge and whinge and whinge, so you end up having to get up. So on the one hand he keeps me really fit because I'm always out with him, but on the other hand, you know, it's quite tedious because you never get a break, he's just always on the go. Even though it's daylight, we've came the wrong way because we shouldn't be seeing this road up here on the right, or straight ahead as you're looking at it. Um, that should, we shouldn't be here, we should be further down the road, so I'm going to have to take a left down here. So that's how easy it is to get lost, and that's in daylight. So I've been watching the news recently about this little boy that got murdered and you know all these people in power are saying yeah lessons have been learnt and they never learn any lessons it's just more lies because things are worse now than what they've ever been you know and what they will do is they'll blame it on some social worker who's down the bottom of the heap and um, the lowest person that can take the blame that's who will eventually get blamed for the death of that child and I work in health and social care and I know that that social worker would have turned up at the house on that day to visit that child and they would not have questioned very much because they would be terrified that the parents would say they're discriminating against them or put in some fictitious report about them and they would lose their jobs. So everybody in social work at the moment, instead of lessons being learned, they're terrified to do their jobs. I was in a position once where I saw this guy that I was working with, he had learning disabilities and I believed he was being abused. And the person that was abusing him was an African man. And when I went to report the abuse, the first thing I was asked was if I was racist or not. And I was made to feel, you're only reporting this guy because you're racist. Not because he's doing anything wrong, and it, the abuse went on for a long time after I reported it, but it eventually came out and people saw the truth, eventually, but it took a long time, and if those people hadn't said that to me and just followed up on what I had said, you know, I was turning up at work and this resident had bruises on his body, his money was disappearing, his soap, even his toilet paper, his food, everything was disappearing and it was always when this guy was on shift. So this is us coming into the graveyard that I was talking about. Really unusual. Um, it's in the middle of the woods. Some graves don't have any writing, they're just mounds in the ground. Like this. I'm not sure how the animals don't dig them up but they don't seem to. Um, they're all over the place actually, oh here's one here. It's just a little stone with some warts. Um, there's another one that's got some writing. Life is a journey, see you at the next stop, Carol Mabin Hudson, forever in our hearts. I don't know what to make of it, you know, it's mm. almost like when you die, you're dead, so does it really make a difference where you're buried about, because your body's going to go back to the ground anyway, no matter where you get buried or cremated or whatever. So I really don't understand 
what it's all about, but it's quite a big one. I believe it's quite expensive to um, get buried in here. I haven't looked into it, but I spoke to somebody about it, and they said it's quite expensive. Carol Blaine, 1941 to 2016. A loving and caring, caring wife. She inspired all who knew her and will remain forever in our hearts. What do you think, Winston? I think I need to get out of here because there is a real sort of horrible smell of death. You can really smell it in here. And it's, it's overpowering. I've smelt dead bodies on a few occasions. And it's an overwhelming, overpowering smell. And I just feel I need to get out of here. It's not a nice smell at all. I don't know what I think about it. I think, you know, when I die I don't really care where I'm going to get buried. I know the Christian faith believe that he should be buried because when Jesus comes back all the people are going to be raised from the graves and taken to heaven and that's a nice thought you know so I think I'd like to be buried just wait, wait for that to happen um, I don't know what I think religions are a sort of funny thing isn't it because people genuinely believe what they believe in you know and um, oh that was really overpowering that smell I wasn't expecting that I've been in there before and I haven't smelt that but I think it's because of the ground you know they've got a little wooden church here as well tiny little church building in the woods here um, come on A little wooden outhouse kind of toilet thing there as well. Just there. It's great to believe in something. It makes life worth living. Not to just think that there's nothing there. At the end of it all, what was the point of it? You know, so it's nice to think that you're going to go to heaven and all the pain you've suffered in the, the world is going to go away. And I, I believe that because I want to believe it. You know, I want to believe it's true. But some Christians are, you know, they're obsessed. You've got right-wing Christians now that are obsessed with money and Donald Trump and all this stuff. And it just doesn't seem to be what the Bible tells us, you know. So I kind of try and stay away with that and away from that stuff and just believe that, you know, there's a place in heaven for me after this life. I don't think I'd like to be buried out in those woods. I find it quite creepy. There's a woman sort of sneaking about in there. Anyway, that's our walk just about over. Um, you can see the car park at the end of this road. It's probably just maybe three miles, two and a half to three miles and Winston's enjoyed it, I've enjoyed it so we'll say goodbye from him Mr Winston, Winston, you would say goodbye goodbye and goodbye from me, Mike, bye